Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Goblets and Gaze. This is a special little mini series of The Corrupted, and I'm going to turn it over to the person who will be running things. So, Navar, why don't you take it away and tell us what's going on tonight? Hello, I am Navar. I'm the uh, host and creator of Secret Nerd Podcast. I am the co host of No Direction Podcast. And um, among some other things, I do a lot of podcasts, um, and we're here today to play a game that I created called The Corrupted. Uh, the Corrupted is a Last of Us inspired uh, narrative TTRPG, um, and yeah, it's meant to simulate that journey uh, through the apocalypse and the tough relationships that we go through and the human conflict that comes up. Um, so I'm very excited uh, and honored to be here uh, running this game for y'all. Thank you so much. Also, uh, for those who don't know me, my name, uh, my pronouns are he, him. We are honored and excited to have you with us. Yeah, oh, so very excited ever since you announced the game. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I'm by the time that this comes out in audio, it might already be uh, in print, but um, it'll still be available on on itch as well. You can find it at navarsnp.itch.io slash the corrupted. Um, There'll be yeah. links below in the, the show notes. Amazing. Um, so, yes, I guess we shall get started uh we have our crew of four um yeah so we are five years into the future of the apocalypse uh the event started after a plane was hit by an unidentified object off the coast uh and some people tried to save the occupants of the plane and uh, this created a really bad situation when it was determined that the occupants of the plane were scientists carrying a deadly pathogen, unknown pathogen. Um, before anybody could stop them, uh, the people that were helping uh, left to live their own lives, go on planes, leave their vacations and, uh, and spread this deadly pathogen all over. It would only took about five days and that mutated into what we have seen for the past five years uh, what we have seen for the past five years we will i guess i'll just let it come up in game i think that'll be more fun for the audience um if they're not aware of what, what the game is like but yeah we we have our party we've we have a group of four i'll let you describe yourselves but i at this point in time we have been traveling through uh the u.s moving west it is now in about mid-fall um and the last big city you were in was columbus ohio uh but columbus ohio was getting pretty overrun there wasn't a lot of resources left and what you've been finding is that in a lot of these cities and small towns especially the small towns when there isn't uh like a military couldn't do anything about it a lot of the corrupted that turn there just kind of meander about and um so now we are sort of faced with that same thing as you have been traveling sort of southwest and you made it to paris kentucky and in paris kentucky you can see that there was a lot of the same thing a lot of the big like plazas like the walmart and things like that all had these corrupted that were kind of just stationary um you see some that are moving about you see some that are connected to different light poles with these long tethers of black string and all along uh throughout the the streets everything is is sort of untouched by man by humans in a in a big way uh weeds are starting to grow through the cracks uh, vines are starting to cover buildings, b windows that have been busted out. Uh, have, you can see plants growing through the windows, new, new underbrush, all of this um, basically nature kind of taking itself back in places that there aren't people walking around and living anymore. Uh, some houses are still secure. Some places are still secure. And as you've skirted around the town to try to avoid the main parts of of the corrupted population, you come across a small plaza that seems to be empty. Uh, there are four buildings there. You can see that there is an old uh, Mexican restaurant um, 
but it's in Kentucky. It probably wasn't good Mexican food, let's be honest. Um, I live in New Mexico, I can say this. There's also a, <laughs> there's also a, uh, like a massage parlor, a nail parlor. Um, there is like a little t-shirt shop and a Papa John's. And so all of this uh, stuff is kind of where we're setting up now to try and see, can we find any, any resources? Um, in, in this late in the game, it's, it's pretty tough to come across resources and, so yeah, we're we're struggling a little bit. Um, I want to start with Alyssa. I first want you to uh, introduce your character, tell us what your character looks like, and then I will have you make a roll. I'll make you. I'll have you make two rolls, and I'll explain both of them when we get there. Concern. <laughs> yes. So I think that maybe leading the pack is Mina Lori, who is a 31-year-old woman with sort of light brown hair. Nope, light brown skin and dark hair that's pulled back into sort of twin braids curled up into buns at the bottom of her head. She wears a sort of quilted motorcycle jacket that's very much practical and for protection it would not be her style at all. And peeking out below that is a sort of floral ornamental tattoo across her collarbone. Uh, she's short, around five feet, and has a pair of binoculars uh, hanging from around her neck. And I think that seeing the sign for the old Mexican food place, her whole demeanor kind of lights up. Um, so she has these sort of impish features that you can really see and really shine when she's smiling and happy. And she nudges one of the other people in the group and says, might be some dry goods in there still. Um, yeah, so you you see this. You also see that around you are some vehicles. Um, I think at this point, you're you can tell that the truck that you guys are in is running pretty low on on gas. Um, so I think where we'll start you with is as you as you say that. Um, let's say that you that Mina is uh, standing next to a vehicle about to try to siphon some gas. So I'm going to have you do a maintenance vitality roll. Um, but before you roll that, actually, I need you to roll a d4, please. That is a two. A two. Okay, I need you to mark one stress. Oh, no. <laughs> because we're starting out five years in the future and mm. things have been going on, we, everybody's going to take a little stress before we get started. So um, we'll do a D4 minus one. Yours was a surprise. Uh, and then you can roll a D20 for your maintenance plus your vitality. A minus two is 18. 18. Okay. Um, yeah. So this, this, uh, vehicle, this like, we'll say it's like a van, like a Honda, uh, is, it seems to have some gas left in it and you're able to get gas out. So you can add one fuel to your, um, to your sheet. And yeah. Who do you think you are talking to when you say, when you talk about the Mexican restaurant? Uh, of course I'm talking to my beloved Elaine beautiful um yes so ferris please introduce us to elaine uh elaine is pretty like uh on the taller side probably like five nine five ten um which is really funny uh because i didn't know how short mina was um she's built um strong but like in like a rock builder kind of way uh, not a rock builder a rock climber <laughs> Um, she's got short hair, uh, that's like, uh, kind of unevenly cut because she has to cut it herself now, um, like, peeled over earring holes, um, and wears like, uh, uh, like those little, you know, front pocket button downs with like the sleeves rolled up, um, and a little like handkerchief around her neck, uh, backpack on the back. She's, she's ready and she's got... They're pretty old by now, but they're solid, good, like, good hiking boots. These are, like, well, well made, very, very good boots. Um, yeah, and, um, she kind of looks over at the, the restaurant after, after Mina mentions it and says, 
worth checking out. Yeah, and I will go ahead and let you guys interact, but uh, while that's happening, please give me a d4. A one. A one. Okay, so you have zero stress. Um, you woke up happy and live in your best life today. I so, guess. <laughs> um, yeah. So you you see you see the you see the uh, the restaurant. Um, and yeah, it, it doesn't look like like all of, for whatever reason this plaza seems to have been um, pretty pretty undisturbed. Uh, you can see like all the glass is still on the windows of the restaurant. It doesn't seem like the doors um, ajar or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I think I would like to pass it over to Aubrey. Uh, Aubrey, what is your character doing in this moment? Um, having sort of stepped out of the car to just take a moment to just we've probably been driving for a while but you know do the thing where you know you just kind of just try to like align your spine uh after sitting for a long time um and is going to take the medic bag on her hip and sort of put it up on like the side of the car and start going through and just sort of doing a quick what do I have? What do I need? Maybe some of these places can have anything I can scrounge for uh, medical supplies. And you see uh, a woman, probably early 30s or so, um, and she has dirty blonde hair that goes down to her shoulders. And, and as good of a cut as one can do in uh, these days, with probably not act, not good hair scissors, scissors or anything, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but she is wearing clothing as to sort of seen better days, um, you know, really scuffed up and dirty boots, uh, jeans that have probably far too many holes in them. Uh, some of them have been patched with whatever fabric, you know, we can get our hands on, uh, and. It's kind of a bit layered up top, sort of a, a gray tank top with a flannel and this canvas jacket. Uh, you can see on the side of her neck, sort of starting from where her shoulder is and going up to sort of right under her ear, is a uh, sort of a, a bit of a, um, a couple of violet flowers. Mm. Uh, and, you know, on uh, hanging around her neck is a a wedding ring on a uh, like a leather cord. Nice. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, you you hear the obviously the the quick conversation about the about the restaurant, um, and then you can see all of the other buildings as well. Is there anything? Is there any of these buildings that interest you uh, at first go? Um, I might go to the t-shirt. Because if okay. there's any cloth left, that can make good bandages. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. So, perfect. Uh, you head over in that direction, um, and that leaves us with, uh, well, first, does, does Shaban say anything um, to any of the people as you're walking in that direction? Um, yeah, I will definitely, I will turn to the rest of the group, uh, and you know, let them know that I am heading off, uh, letting, pointing out the uh, the sh the store and saying uh, I'm probably gonna start there to see if there's anything I can salvage to replenish my kit. I did forget to say my character's name. My character's name is Siobhan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Awesome. So Aki, you hear Siobhan say this? Let us know about your. Wait, I'm sorry. We're we're we're. Roll that d4, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got two. Two. Uh, so one stress. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Now, you, now, Aki, please go. Hello. Um, so uh, I think uh, when I hear Siobhan uh, say that, I will simply give her a nod and choose to stay where I'm at. Um like she's within line sight and I might move a little bit closer to keep her within mm -hmm. like view 
but also um, uh, look at that the party got split um, <laughs> and I'm not having a great time I'll just straight up say that I am not having a great time and I think regardless of what I roll I, I choose to have one stress okay um, at least uh, okay. so, solely because I'm already not happy <laughs> about having to, to, to move yeah and uh and yeah i should probably tell you what i look like so i'm playing mm-hmm. sabrina um she's uh she's an east asian woman with uh like close to 30s i'll say like yeah also early 30s i guess i don't fucking know let's just say 30 ish yeah ish <laughs> you know the 30 is a good number yeah um damn it's old and i just Ouch. i'm joking i wanted to say it i wanted to say that to offend the rest of you i'm joking <laughs> i don't give a shit about 30 hey, hey, uh, <laughs> now with this skin i'm gonna look <laughs> like i'm 15 for a while now and then drop to a thousand at a very good age um but yeah uh so yeah, just a young woman uh, in uh, she's got long dark hair that's currently up in uh, a messy bun messy because it's only held together by one of those chunky clips like hair clips that's kind of putting it into place uh, her outfit consists of for some reason one of those crop tank tops uh, with a really chunky like hoodie um and uh sweatpants that have been kind of tied um at the bottom so that way like you know the the top is bit baggy for space and comfort but the bottom is like not it's sort of tied or taped off to be um on the skinnier side so that way you know it doesn't get caught into things uh and uh some good running shoes and um over her chest is a fanny pack that's like super colorful uh, and around her neck is a little jade pendant uh, she is wearing a matching uh, red, 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 wedding ring uh, on her finger uh, like and that's probably the most I, a normal thing I feel like uh, out, of, out of the lot mm. and um She's definitely carrying um, her gear close to her, so she's wearing her backpack. She has a gun out, um, and she's just kind of standing where we sta- where we stood, waiting, very patiently, very nicely. <laughs> sort of like when you leave like a horse or a donkey in the middle of the game, just grazing some fucking grass while y'all go into buildings and doing shit. That's where she stays. That's where Sabrina stays. Um, chill, watching. I I shouldn't even say chill. Like as chill as you can be. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. Um, kind of wants to just move, but understands the importance of um, scavenging. But also, y'all can scavenge. <laughs> it's it, I I got my things to do soon. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so the, you can see this plaza is like the parking lot's fairly big. Like it's one of those things, right? When there's tons of vehicles in a place, you don't really realize how much space is there. Uh, and then when there aren't that many vehicles, and it's like, oh wow, this is uh, kind of closed. Um, but you start to head that direction. Um, I'm curious, do Mina and Elaine? Do you? You see, you see Siobhan moving in that direction. Do you head off towards the the restaurant, or do you do you follow along to the t-shirt? Oh, before you answer that question, I'm sorry. I'm a forgetful person. Uh, sometimes, Aki, please roll that d4. I know you're gonna have one stress regardless, but let's see how stressed out you are. You rolled a two. You're muted. Uh, roll the two, so minus one would be one, uh, okay. but I already want to have one, so two. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You are, yeah, you get two. Okay. Beautiful. Um, yes. So, yeah. Uh, for Mina and Elaine. Yeah, think? I think 
Mina hates splitting the group apart, and okay. so especially with Shaban, who is our medic, so she's very important, but not necessarily someone I trust to uh, take care of herself. Mm. So <laughs> I think that seeing her start to walk off, Mina's going to sort of whisper shout at her buddy system and tag along. Oh, shit, one thing, one thing I forgot to yeah. mention about Sabrina. Um, Sabrina continues to wear makeup into the apocalypse. It's very light, but, like, she's got it. She's crafty. She, do- she like, maybe, I don't know, has figured out through trial and tribulation on how to fix those makeup kits. So nice. She can just carry them with her. <laughs> so very, very light makeup on. And probably right now taking out one of those Burt B's lip balm, just putting it on, just like, yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. If I'm gonna die, my lips won't be chapped, but yeah. Yeah. Hit up the Burt's Bees factory on your travels. Um, amazing. Yes. What, uh, what about Elaine? Um, I think Elaine will probably like check to make sure that Sabrina is like staying put with the vehicle. Um, and then seeing uh, Mina go with Siobhan, um, We'll probably circle up at, with them, but it's just going to take a quick peek into the restaurant just to see if it's, like, worth checking out. Like, okay. how much effort do we have to take to get in there? Does it door open? Does it look bad? You know, like, just, just a quick glance through uh, okay. before circling back and joining the group. Yeah. So are you just, like, going to the window then? Yeah, probably start with, like, looking through the window and seeing if there's any obvious, like, oh... Look at that person there that we don't want to interact with, you know, or yeah. like, oh yeah, the inside trashed, nothing here. <laughs> For sure. Um, let me. She's not about wasting her time. Um, yeah, so you could take a peek around. Let's do and uh, let's do a judgment alertness roll for for Elaine to basically then... see like how well you can determine like the safety of this situation. Um. And that's a D20, and then I add both modifiers? Yes, correct. Oh, gosh. Judgment alert. That's all right. Oh, that's a natural 20. Incredible. Uh, so plus in, nine. So 29. <laughs> yeah. uh, so in, in the corrupted, a natural 20 is always a critical. A natural one is always a critical fail. Uh, but they there's a tiered success system, so you can also, if you get over 20 with your modifiers, that's a critical as well. Um, but yeah, so what you can tell is that the door is locked. Like I said, all the windows that you could see from the front um, do appear to be... Um, uh, intact still. What you can also see with that natural 20 is like as you're looking through, you can see that there seems to be some kind of natural light coming from the back room, um, which you would assume means there's probably the door in the back is, prob- was, is probably still open um, from somebody previously opening it. Um, and there's no obvious signs of any sort of danger going on. <laughs> Not in no, not from not from where you're at. Even with the natural twenty, you don't see like you don't see any people in there. You don't see any like moving figures or you know anything. Okay, um, yeah, then I'll just uh, let Sabrina know that I'm going to go around the back um, okay. and to give it. So just I'll to be clear, you're yelling the across the parking lot. No, um, I'm going <laughs> to hand her one of the walkie talkies. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then say I'm going to go. I'm going to go around the back. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll accept it if you want to yell across the parking lot. That's perfectly fine. Um, Not today. (laughs) Not today. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So you head around to the back. Uh, While that's happening, I'm going to go back to Mina and Siobhan. Um, You approach the door of the t-shirt place, and you can see that um, the... The door seems to like be, it looks like somebody has pried it before. Um, The door is like, it's got the, it's got the laminated glass. So it's not, the glass isn't shattered, but you can see where somebody tried to bust it and then just got tired of that and tried to just pry the door open. Um, So it will come free. I think you'll probably have to put a little elbow grease into it um, if that's the way you want to go. And and this building, it's basically like you could either go through that door, uh, maybe bust out a a window. on the side, which probably is going to be laminated as well, or try to see if there's a back entrance, if that's what you would like to do. 
Mina sort of rolls her shoulders back and turns to Siobhan and asks, want me to try and get that? Uh, be my guest. Uh, as like, I'm gonna like try to look through the window and see if I can see anything Perfect. in there. Like it, it is, the whole thing is like, does it look like this is, do I see any figures moving or anything that looks not mannequin, <laughs> more person shaped? Okay. Um, yeah, so give me, uh, mm-hmm. a, a, let's do judgment alertness for you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if Mina is going to just do that while while she's looking, then give me a brawn athletics. Uh, for my role, that's a 17. 17, okay. I got and a 20. Nice. Dirty 20, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, that's still, that's still a crit. So uh, we have a natural 20 and we have a 17. So you are looking through basically from where you're at all you see is you see like the t-shirts you see some racks that are like been uh turned over um you can see like from where you're from the window you can see that the cash cash register has been opened um and it's like just still open um it seems to be like fairly from what you can tell like fairly dusty from through the window uh how much of that dust is like window dust and how much of it is inside dust you're not sure but as soon as you're trying to determine that uh the door pops open you hear a loud kind of bang um and and you are in Mina is standing in the doorway. Uh, like I said, you see all the same stuff that Siobhan was seeing, um, and you just get the rush of like, like basically like very dusty clothes, um, uh, clothing smell. And give me a, let's do a. Hmm. We got a lot of skills um, in the corrupted, so I want to see what would be the best for this one. Let's do. Let's do a judgment first aid roll from Mina, please. That is a 15. Okay. All right. Let's see. So with a 15, I guess I'll just explain this for people if they're interested. So critical failure is one. Two to nine is a failure. Uh, 10 to 15 is a partial success, which usually means like you get kind of half of what you uh, wanted. Um 16 to 19 is a success and a crit is a crit uh, 20 or higher so um with a 15 you you walk in you get that that smell of dust in clothes um but you you also there's just a weird another like strange smell in the air that you're not aware of like you can't pinpoint it but there's something else that doesn't just seems like odd for the placement of of this room sort of like reels back a little from the door and wrinkles her nose and says it's really stale in there I mean is that even sterile for bandages oh probably not but maybe there's maybe there's a box or something in the storeroom that may not have been touched by this you're the expert and Mina will go ahead and head in despite that odd smell Mm. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. Does Siobhan follow through? Yeah. As well? Okay. Yeah. So I think like as you come into the room, it, like I said, you, you have that smell. You can see like it's a fairly large room. Like it was a basically like a clothing store. So it's it's fairly large. Um, and I think just kind of carrying over that uh, previous alertness role um, from Siobhan, as you as you enter and you're looking around and you catch that smell too, I think coming from your medical field you can smell like oh this that smells like blood and you look and you can see like at the end where there's an office where there Mm. was an office there seems to be like somebody's foot uh sticking out as if they are laying on the floor uh sticking out of the door Mm. um and i we've we've worked together for like a little bit at this point so you know would kind of like do the thing where you just like hold your hand up being like stop and then point, you know, like, look around, be, just make sure once more that we are, we're alone. Um, and hopefully this was human on human violence and not other. Slight wariness to actually approach. Um, yeah, as you're like slowly creeping in that direction, you, um, you don't seem 
to see anything else or hear anything else. Um, you know, from like the, over the five years, like I said, that uh, corrupted when they aren't like encountering something, they tend to just go into like a stationary mode where they just kind of stand still. Um, but they do react to sounds. Uh, as of yet, it doesn't seem as though you've affected any, you created any kind of stir um, that you could see in this room. Uh, and so, and the, the foot that's on the floor seems to be and, staying still. Yeah. I mean, there was a little bit of noise when we opened the door. So, I mean, yeah. one would hope that if there was one there, I would have responded to that. And Yeah. Um, yeah. So as you sort of creep back to, to, uh, towards that foot, uh, I'm going to jump over to... Um, Sabrina, what is Sabrina doing? You, you see them busted through the door open and they kind of go in and uh, you see, you know, uh, Elaine's on the other side. You're kind of just in this parking lot by yourself. And it's a fairly large parking lot. Yeah, yeah. With And it's like relatively empty of cars and shit, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Basically, there's like a few here and there. One of the ones that you pulled the, the fuel from that uh, Mina pulled the fuel from. Yeah, I think well, obviously, I don't want to start the car or anything like that, because that's a waste of fuel um, mm -hmm. if we're not going anywhere. And um, I think um, after I see um, Elaine pop back up, I will just kind of, like, with my finger, really point to where um, the other two went, just to kind of alert um, Elaine to that but I um I'm not going in like scavenging's not my thing um I will literally slow y'all down with how much shit that I carry on me and have I, I might actually keep some of it in the car um at this point cause it's it's like now my back's hurting or whatever <laughs> like damn I've just been standing here um no I'll do one better I go sit in the driver's seat <laughs> so, after I make uh, Elaine aware of what, wh where is going where, because so far, um, everything seems chill for now, but I am not really one to, to run in guns blazing either. I, I'm more of like a very convenient getaway driver. I'll bring <laughs> the car closer should I hear something. Yeah. Uh, is it fair to say that in this moment, Sabrina is, like, anxious? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, uh, Sabrina is more of a, like, stay home and hold down the fort type of person. Um, and she's quite good at it, actually. So being out on the road is not something that she's, um, ever gonna be okay with. You know, unless, unless miraculously all the corrupted just drop dead. Yeah, like, you know, I don't know. Pandemic over, the apocalypse is done. With five years timed out, Max, yeah, you know, that's, like that. That's how it works, yeah, for sure. Exactly, um, take off your fucking mask, we're all good. You know, yeah. no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely just, um, so yeah, for sure anxious. Um... I think a little bit less since the space is pretty open. You know, if this was like a crowded with cars, it should be a lot, a lot more anxious because it's like now I gotta keep alert. Whereas the open space is a lot easier to see. I don't know, some pig-headed bitch coming at me. Yeah, um, I just like for logistic reasons. Do you feel like the cars parked in towards the parking lot or out towards the street? Oh, sorry, I'm not. I was muted. Out towards the street because I'm gonna get okay. away. Okay. And then, um, is it running currently? Not running. Not running. Okay. We're 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 conservative with the fuel. Yeah. So yeah. So I think like as you sit there waiting for your wife and your friends to come back, um, and friends may be a strong word. I'll let you decide. Um, you, you. I think it's just like that feeling, right? Of like you. There's so much, yes, it's open, but there's so much space to look through. There's so much space to look around for and be aware of. And the car is just silent. There is no noise. And it's that deafening, like thick silence of just like, it's just weighing down on you. Um, I think that's part of 
I think that's part of that building stress. Um, and as that stress builds, I want to kick it back over to Elaine as all this is going on. Um, you approach the door. How are you approaching the door? Are you doing this quietly? Are you uh, just kind of walking up? What's the what's the plan here for Elaine? I think Elaine um, would definitely would approach it on the quiet side just in case um and i think she has like um like a like a fire axe um on her hip with like a cover over it and she would probably remove it and put the cover away just in case um she has a shotgun like in her backpack but that is for emergencies only because bullets are easy to come by (laughs) um and yeah and then she just kind of approach with with caution but like but ready like she's ready for whatever comes okay yeah so go ahead and give me uh an agility stealth roll what was the what was the second thing stealth stealth thank you Mm -hmm. what do you have in these stats by the way a zero in agility but a five in stealth nice Sixteen. Clumsy, but you're quiet. Um, Sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you you don't make any noise as you approach. You can see where the door is. Is like I said, it's ajar. It seems like the the closer that would normally pull that door closed seems to just be uh, torn off, um, and the door is kind of just like in this mid hanging situation. Um, you you get to the door and you're looking inside, and you can see that like where there was dust before there's like these scuffs of feet um and people like it seems like within enough time that the the trail of that person hasn't hasn't left you can still see that dust of their like feet swiping across the ground and pushing against the door um and as you look inside it does appear though that the entire building from where you can see like as you're entering into this sort of storage area all of these racks are just um just emptied out uh everything everything seems to have been like picked through uh from what you can tell um and just whomever did it didn't bother to to close the door after themselves and so uh as you're walking through you can see like you know little rodents running by um and you can see uh like you hear like a cat like yowl at you from the from the other end of the just this feral cat um from the other end of the uh the restaurant um but yeah it it seems like everything has been picked through in this building here um i think i'll sort of open the door a little further um and like if there's something nearby that either it, like if it's just wedging across like uneven flooring or if there's like a nearby rock just to keep it propped open and just do a quick once through of like the storage in the kitchen just in case there's something that whoever came here last didn't think was useful but we might find useful and then if there's nothing there go out and find the other two okay yeah um so we will come back to you. I'm going to jump back over to uh, Siobhan and Mina. Um, As you approach this body on the floor, um, you get close enough and and you're listening and tension is high uh, and nothing seems to appear. Um, You turn around the the wall and you can see now that this full body has... uh, been displayed uh appears to be a a man like maybe in his 40s um he's got like he's wearing like just like a black like torn up like worn out t-shirt um and like these gray like you know paramilitary pants um style he's got some uh some old like um like military boots and he's got like one of them is like taped up with duct tape and he seems to have like he's got a a uh, handgun next to his hands, um, and he's got his backward backwards hat on. It's like a, a white guy with uh, this like semi long hair, um, full beard. And the the odd thing is is that you've seen many different. Uh, corrupted attacks at this point Uh, this one seems to be a little bit different in that it definitely seems like there was a corrupted attack here um 
but it seems also as if something sort of like had stabbed and cut across him um, in a way that would it would only make sense if there was some kind of weapon. And I'll like you can roll to see if you can maybe determine what it would be. Um, but that's kind of like the cursory as you guys uh, come around and see it. Mm. Don't want to spend too much time, but if I can tell anything by like a glance, does this person look like they're about to uh, reanimate? Let's. So I'm gonna because you have uh, medical skills. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say let's do a let's do an a judgment medicine roll. To determine medicine, okay. Yes. At the same time, uh, Alyssa, please roll a um, intelligence alertness. Seventeen for me. That uh, was. It is a twenty-five. Okay. Um. So you you are kind of just like standing a little bit away over it. There's two things that you notice. There's one. It seems like there is a like a white document that seems to be sticking out of uh, this guy's like vest pocket, like over his like little combat vest. Um, you also can see that as like you, you notice these wounds, but you can also see now where the, like in the corners of his eyes, you can see the smallest tinge of a black inky substance. Um, you can see like sort of damage around um, his mouth. Uh, and it seems to be like sort of black and um, like spider webbing, not like actual spider webs, but like just like that webbing look um, around his lips. Given your experience over the past five years, you think that there's a really, really good chance that this dude's about to pop up on you. Um, as you were observing that, uh, Alyssa, you notice um, as you're there, like you're kind of like doing a look around to make sure everything's okay, you can see that there's a trail of like mud and a little bit of blood and footprints that lead to a door that would exit to the outside. Um, that door is closed but it looks like it's still slick. We've done this long enough. Is it a shot to the head? What what takes them out? Basically, anything that would kill a person would kill mm. a corrupted. Um, as like ending the life. The basically the what the corrupted needs. So you've seen <clears throat> is just to be able to function the body. If the body can't yeah. function, that it can't do anything. Um, yeah. And as you're like observing this, I think that's when you start to see like a hand twitch. Yeah, as soon as as soon as I noticed that, and I realized it is, um, I have a crossbow, and I probably had it like sort of down pointing, and I'm gonna pull it up, and I'm just gonna shoot him right in the head. Okay. Normally, on just a subject that's just laying there, I, you mm -hmm. would, you wouldn't have to roll, but uh, in this moment, this thing is getting up, so I'm gonna do this basically to see if you mm -hmm. can get the shot off before this thing um, gets up and attacks. Okay. Him. So that is going to be a uh, crossbow, you said. Let's do mm -hmm. um, agility and uh, archery. Sounds good. Pick dice. The what dice is going to be nice to me. <laughs> I, that, that is, it. dice is nice. That is a nat 20 on the dice. Incredible. For a, um, <laughs> uh, that would be a 28. Okay, yeah, so this, you see its eyes pop open, where mm -hmm. obviously humans, we all have these, like, mm -hmm. our iris, and then we have the, whatever the white part is called. Um, this, it's fully black, and it, its eyes open, and it pops up, and it, its mouth opens. You can see the black corruption just going, like, through its teeth, and you quickly are able to dispatch this thing. Well, let's see, uh, roll some damage. So what is your... You have, what's your modifier in archery? Uh, plus five. So roll a d12. All right. Pretty high chance that you're going to succeed in, in it, whatever it is, it's going to be doubled, so. Uh, nine. Nine, okay. Uh, yeah, so you absolutely just, uh, you know, between the eyes, this thing drops back down to the floor. Um, excuse me. And uh, is no longer moving. 
um, <clears throat> I will say just, you know, that paper sticks out to you. Um, and then, uh, Mina, all of this just happened in a moment. Um, you've seen this like, shit, is there other danger going in this direction? And then this guy just popped up and got shot in the face with a crossbow. So. Shit. And then immediately grab a hand. Give me the walkie. I thought you, I thought you had it, so. <laughs> I thought it was handed to you, so I was like, uh, <laughs> if I have it, I'll give it to you. Mm. Uh, Actually, I think Sabrina uh, has it. Oh, Sabrina oh, has it. There's the question, how many walkies do we have? Just two, or do we have three? Uh, I think based on the roll, we, we had just two, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay, sorry, uh, I thought you gave it to uh, Siobhan while she was walking. No, I gave it to Sabrina, because Sabrina's on her own. <laughs> Hello? My thought okay. process was, like, if we break up into, like, small groups, and whoever's, like, on their own gets the walkies, and whoever's in a group gets no walkies. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Okay, then uh, rewinding that, Mm -hmm. um, I think that, yeah, Mina swears and pulls back a little bit from the body and then grabs Siobhan's arm and says, look, there's there's someone else was here. Someone else left. They might still be in the area. Maybe we should. Yeah. Yeah, Elaine is on her own. Yeah. 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 yeah, Let's... uh... Yeah, and I'm going to kind of quietly double time it out of this place. Okay. Uh, like, a- as much as I wanted to, uh, like, I saw something and wanted to see if this person had anything interesting, but I think it's better if we, uh, we close ranks. Yeah. So are you going out the back door or are you going back through the front? Oh, we're going to go out the front door. Okay. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever went out the back door, and <laughs> I'm worried that if I go out the back door, I'm gonna have an unpleasant meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, Aki, I need you to roll a. Just because of how anxious Aki or Aki's, <laughs> because of how anxious Sabrina is, uh, please do an empathy alertness roll. And this is just to see, like, if you can kind of work your nerves out to like be aware enough um to to see what's going on empathy and what sorry alertness alertness cool i got a two in empathy and a two in alertness and my modifier is plus four um however however i have a part of my miscellaneous items a crank radio could Mm. i like say that i'm using it and get like a bonus or something (laughs) By making noise? Oh, um... By making noise, but also I'm in a car. It's closed. Yeah, yeah. So I'll say... Up. Not to be <laughs> blasting it or anything. <laughs> well, well it's a crank do... radio. You can adjust the volume. Yeah. And unless the thing has been inside, like, my fucking glove compartment this whole time, <laughs> I think I'll be fine. I don't have your character sheet in front of me, but what I'll say is you can... With the radio, I'll let you decide if you want to use your judgment instead of your empathy, um, then you could do that. I don't know if that's better for you or not, but that's that's that what that is, would do. That is better for me. My judgment is actually a four. Okay. Thank you. Do D20, right? That's yep. a 19 on the die. Um, so <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> fucking um, yeah. So, yes. Okay, so yeah, you're listening to your radio. What are you listening to? What do you think, like, what do you think you found? Um, so I think I found, first and foremost, I found a lot of static. Um, yeah. Cause, just because I have to click through channels, I gotta adjust the volume. Um, with the window not open, it probably does not help, but I refuse to open the window right now. Yeah. Um, but um, I think at some point, I just find... Um, like uh the the equivalent of a um uh of a baby music radio station so Mm -hmm. like the the kind that um has like those lullaby musics you know (laughs) yeah that kind of that kind of yeah yeah i think at some point baby shark comes on i'm like oh damn that slaps like you know like just 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 a blast from the past but like you know it's 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 chill enough um Mm -hmm. where um where i'm just i'm just glad i can hear something but you know at a decent decently soft volume 
it's yeah. also not, not even the best quality you know it's, it's yeah. like yeah <laughs> i think as you're like using this to try and oh um i'm so sorry also i forgot to mention every time you guys rolled a natural 20 uh you reduce your stress by one um so I, I apologize for not keeping track of that before, um, but I think that would probably get everybody back down to zero, if I remember correctly. Um, like everyone, the group, or? Well, each person, when you roll a, a natural 20, it takes your own stress level down by one. Mm, okay, okay, just one. So I think, like, check. yeah, included in this, I think, which makes sense for Sabrina, is, like, you're, you're finding a way to, like, self-soothe, and... Um, that's working until you see that from around the corner of the plaza, there appears to be a person um, who is covered in blood and some kind of like black muck and mud. And it is running uh, towards the, the t-shirt door um, as which it looks like a, a corrupted, right? What I think is weird about that is that one of its arms seems to be missing a hand, and it seems like the bone on that arm seems to be um, either cracked, like split into a point, or sharpened into a point. It looks like it's created some kind of, like, uh, basically like a, a weapon uh, from this arm. So, um, and it is running in that direction. Okay. Um. I just turn the radio off and I pull out that walkie-talkie. Mm. And, and and the other end is is Elaine. And I, I I just go in my nice as not no, not even, okay? Like not after what I just saw again. Um and I just go, yeah, um I mean, fucking give me this. Okay, so um there is a corrupted running towards where our partners are in the little t-shirt area it looks armed but at the same time disarmed <laughs> uh, yeah and it is like full on just going at this point um, I'll let you faster I'll let, oh. than a star <laughs> quarterback it's going in it cannot perceive obstacles you might want your shotgun. I will pull up. Uh, I think Elaine pulls out the radio and says, succinctness is probably for the best and books it out of the restaurant. Okay. Um, yeah, you you smash out of the back of the restaurant and you come around the side and you can see like this thing gunning it uh, down the plaza. Um, Aki, are you kicking, excuse me, are you kicking on the cars that you said? I will. I will turn it on. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. turn it on um, and make sure it gets a bit closer. But like, we still, we 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 still judge in here, okay? Like, I'm not gonna yeah. slam into it yeah. or anything. No car tricks. But like, I want to make sure that it's really just one going in there. The last thing we need is for the car to get overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, because then we're fucked. For sure. Um, I I gave you a truck and I didn't do this to be mean, but the, obviously the truck starts and the thing, it, it kicks on, right? It's loud. Um, and and you can see like as you turn it on, the corrupted itself turns and looks in your direction um, and it starts to make pace that way. Uh, as that's happening, Siobhan and Mina, you burst out of the door. I'm... Hmm... I want to say, like, the ooh, Mina has the more physical stats, right? And I think yeah. you were closer to the entrance anyway because you were behind. So I think, yeah, Mina busts out the door first. Uh, you see this thing um, turn its head and start running towards the truck that just kicked on. Fuck, truck, 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 um, truck, 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 truck. Uh, if you're you are first, I imagine you re you will yeah. react first. So yeah. okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So basically, how it works, like we're not going to roll initiative or anything. Yeah. Whoever's doing something is the person that goes, um, and then we'll just go from there. <laughs> Knowing how useless Sabrina is, um, I am going to pull the long rifle off my back and sort of wait until I maybe have a clearish shot or like if it's running sort of in a straight yeah. line I'm, yeah it's definitely like it's it's single minded right so it's running it's running in that direction um, I would say you as soon as you get out the door and you have your rifle out you can definitely take a clear shot okay that's what I'm going to try and do 
Okay. I will take the second to reload my crossbow because that takes the second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that'll just be going on in the in the background. Um, go ahead and roll your agility uh, long rifles, please. What are your modifiers for this? That is a plus zero and a plus one, but I got a 15 on the dice, so it is a 16. Okay. All <laughs> Barely right. Barely making it. <laughs> yeah, success. My goodness. Um, so you have a plus one in long rifle, so you are going to do uh, D4 of damage. That is four points of damage. Okay. Um, okay. So... The other thing, um, when we're using guns in this game, uh, we have to count for bullets. So I need you to roll a d10 to see how many shots you take to try to get these, to basically take this four points of damage. Oh no, did I want to roll low? (laughs) Yes, you do. I got a 10. (laughs) Uh, Incredible. I don't think we like determine like what your rifle is anyway, right? No. Oh. So we'll just say, like, you just have, like, an assault rifle. We don't have to, like, put a designation on it. But basically, you're, yeah, you're just trying to, like, take these shots. And um, you, you're shooting in that direction. You can hear, like, a ting of, like, hitting, like, the back end of the truck uh, with one of the bullets. And um, you hit this thing, and you seem to hit it in its thigh. And it sort of stumbles. Uh, but it gets up and starts running still. Um, and it is... Uh, yeah, I think it's still running in in Serena's direction at this point. Um, and then I will take it to Siobhan can go next. Um, so your, it, part of your turn is going to be reloading, right? Yeah, a reload, reload the crossbow and take a shot. Okay, so the same thing. Yeah, so agility and archery. I really love my wife, apparently, uh, because I rolled a 19 <laughs> on the dice and I get plus Jeez. eight. My goodness. I will fucking hope you loved your Let's wife. <laughs> what the fuck is that straight shit you just said? <laughs> Incredible. Uh, remind me what your modifier is for archery. Uh, it is a plus five. Okay, yeah, so roll that d12, and this is going to be doubled. Uh, this might be mm-hmm. the wildest success right here. Uh, it would be a five on the dice. Five? Okay, so a ten. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah, so you quickly reload. You pull up and you take this shot. It sails across. It looks like this is an impossible thing, um, but it doesn't seem impossible to the doctor because you have been practicing this thing for the past five fucking years, and you know your crossbow. And when this thing sails, it uh, it hits in the like in the back of the of the corrupted um and it goes through you can see like it it's possible it like pierced the lung maybe like it went through it pretty pretty deep um and it sort of stumbles and falls and rolls but it is starts flailing and it is still trying to get up for some reason this is this is longer than it's like this is more than it's ever taken to kill a corrupted that you've come across um and something seems weird about this it definitely um, that was a five on the die. Okay, yeah, okay. So, yes, uh, I am going to. So, I mean, at this point, I think Elaine's running out. Uh, but while uh, Sabrina's right there, I'm gonna say, Aki, what what are you doing? You see, you hear the gunshots. You you see it. This thing just take a hit and fall. At this point, are you moving the truck? Or are you? What are you doing? Um, so it's it's the back of the truck that is taking some lead. So I think at first I duck a little bit because I'm in the truck and y'all miss. Um, it, it's not even that far, but you miss wide. Um, but I can still see like what's going on probably with the review. Um, and I think as soon as I see it, like, you know, I see it fall, but try to get back up. I just hit it in reverse and floor it backwards. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna run uh, it over. Okay, you're gonna try to run it over. Yeah. Uh, okay. If you're going to try and maneuver the truck to hit it, I am going to need... Hmm, I'm gonna need a judgment driving to see if you can um, in this moment assess the right angle and everything to get this done. And like, right turn radius on this truck. Yeah. 
I got, I got, so judgment once again is four, and my driving is a one. Um, because, like, you don't really need to drive in the book. <laughs> yeah, if you're an average driver, you're fine. Exactly. That's even actually, that's above average, so you're good. Yeah, exactly, exactly, you know. Um, 15. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. I am going to... Basically, there are certain things in the game, right, that we would qualify as massive damage. Um, getting hit by a vehicle is massive damage. So what I'm going to do is roll a d20. If it is a 1 through 10, then it's going to be 4 points of damage. If it's a uh, 11 through 20, it'll be 8 points of damage. Whatever that number is, because it's a partial success, is going to be reduced by half. So I rolled a 17. So it is going to take an additional four points of damage. So I think as you're driving towards it, it starts to get up and it moves. It kind of like lunges at you in a way that maybe it like it it triggers like a flight response or something in Sabrina and it gets hit, but it like rolls along the side of the truck, hits your hits your rear view mirror, uh, your side mirror. And you can see it on the ground. Um, but this thing's still kicking. Uh, Elaine, you are pretty far um, at this point. I would say you could spend most of your turn running. Um, I th- what's, your, what's Elaine's intelligence? Or intellect, excuse me. What's your intellect and your and your judgment? Your, those two modifiers. I've got a minus one on the intellect, but a four on the judgment. Okay, I would say having a four judgment, that means you're pretty smart in, in determining like when you should do a thing or not. And I would say like given the distance that you're at and the fact that this creature just impacted with the vehicle, it wouldn't be a good idea to shoot your shotgun from where you're at. Uh, you can continue running in that direction. Um, as you're running, you see it like you see it still like twitching and trying to get back up again. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would just say, like, it seems like a bad idea to shoot from this distance at this thing with a shotgun. Uh, yeah, then I think um, she's got to just keep running uh, towards it while motioning towards the other two to get in the truck. It seems at this point now, like, maybe it's got, like, a broken leg. It's, it's struggling, but it is not completely undone. Um, so in the, in the corrupted, all the players go first, and then it is the GM's turn to maneuver, uh, the corrupted around. Um, you guys rolled really, really well. So that is going to mean that I think in this instance, yeah, I think it's just going to, when you hit, when you hit, are you just driving through and discontinuing to drive? No, um, I think I'm. So I'm backing it up to like to 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 mow it down, and then I'm gonna move forward again. You're gonna try to move forward on your yeah. okay. So yeah, you, like you go I'll, back I'll keep a little going bit, back and forth. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think as you as you get ready to throw it back into drive and head forward, this thing runs at you, and it's going to. Um, it's like you see it like kind of limping and 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 crashing a little bit, and it's going to run at you, and it's going to get on top of the hood of the car. Um, and that'll end it because because you guys rolled so well, I don't have a lot of GM moves that I can make, uh, but that's that's going to be the extent of it. Um, so yeah, it's on the hood of the car now and just like trying to thrash at the window. Um, and we're back to Mina. Yeah, can I make it all the way to the car, or is that sort of? <sighs> you definitely could run and grab it, yeah, or run up there to it, yes. Uh, okay, I can I attempt to tackle it off of the sort of front of the car? Sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> that uh, is what I'm going to do then. Okay. Yeah, incredible. So let's do a... Hmm, uh, this one, I think, is going to be agility athletics just because of, like, the idea of, like, moving into these two, you know, moving objects and trying to get this thing safely. I got an alert on the die with a plus five in athletics, so I am just making these successes. Nice. <laughs> making them. Yeah. Your agility is a zero? Agility is a zero. Okay. Um, incredible. Yeah, so... Hmm. So I think what that means then 
is that you are able to grab it and pull it. Um, but I think because it's a partial success, you you grab it and pull it and it falls on top of you. You're not like grappled or restrained at this point, but it is on top of you. Um, and we are going to kick it over to Siobhan. So, um, yeah, Mina's uh, in trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, God, uh, just seeing this... I, I know the infection vector, right? Like what what happens? Like if, yes. if it's not like oh if because my my thing is like this it's it feels a little too dangerous to take a shot. Um, mm -hmm. So my idea was I have a melee weapon. My mm -hmm. idea is just come in with this club or axe or something and just go for the head. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a a melee weapon on your person? Is that uh, part of your equipment? Yes, I did roll and I got uh, one miscellaneous. Okay. Uh, and I hadn't dedicated what yeah. that miscellaneous was. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Like yeah, a so camping we could axe like, or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. That works. Um, yes, so yeah, you could definitely run up there and attack mm -hmm. it with a camping axe. Um, and you would know enough that, like, yeah, if you got, like, the blood whatever mm. on on it, there needs to be a bite or um you it know it needs to be like, like it yeah like mm. i think what you maybe you would refer to as like an invasion or something like where basically yeah. it, <laughs> i'd swear to god i wrote this before mm -hmm. um the last of us show came out but like basically yeah. it, like the corrupted moves from its mouth and it goes and it tries to get inside of you yeah, that, so yeah. like if if not a bite necessarily yeah, but yeah if mina gets splattered with blood we'll be fine yeah mm-hmm mm -hmm. I recently uh, rewatched like uh, s some other zombie stuff, and I was like, my brain. Uh, recently, it was no, it was twenty eight days later, and it was yes. like my brain is now just like, yeah, that one's that twenty eight days later is the worst zombie apocalypse to have to live through. Worst, it's the worst. <laughs> so yeah, the idea is world just World War C exists. Yes. Those zombies literally climb on top of each other oh. in union. In union, is it? Climbing to on top of each other like ladders, man. They they the yes. if That's any fair. any I, zombie I infection that acts like a hive mind is the worst. It's scary. It's scary. Yeah. Agreed. No, I'm with you. I agree. I I'm still think 28 days that. later is worse. Also scary. I mean, listen, a lot of them are scary yeah. for a reason. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> Anytime yeah. they're fast and yeah. have any sort of big intelligence, yeah, mm -hmm. get me out of there. Yep. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Um, yes. Okay. So, yeah, you're going to run up and attack. So, that'll be a brawn, uh, melee weapons. Brawn melee? Uh, yeah. Uh, minus one brawn. But I got plus three melee, so it's a plus two. Yep. Mm hmm. Uh, and that is a 16 on the die for an 18. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, how do you like? What? What do you? Th what are you doing with this attack? How are you trying to just end this thing? Um, the uh, if it's on top, go for the base of the skull where you know the spinal cord is. Yeah. Uh, and that's just a quick, easy. You know, uh, if it still kind of works the way you know a a, a person works, you, you take that out. You know, a person's not going to be able to move. So it's like just hack away at that point yeah okay uh yes uh so i still need to roll damage um because there's a chance there's a very slim chance that this could still not be enough <laughs> which would be so funny what what die should i use uh what is your melee weapon it's a plus three plus three you get a d8 awesome <laughs> big numbers big yeah. numbers <laughs> That is a six. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely works. Um, yeah, I think yeah, you end it, and it just uh, collapses on top of Mina. Mm. And seeing that is, I I will immediately see it. it. It's collapsed. It's dead. Grab it by the shoulders and huddle it off Mina. Okay. Yeah, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Mina is unsoothed by this <laughs> event, this turn of events. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I think, yeah, like this, all of this, right, is like everything is adrenaline high. Um, like I said, you guys rolled really well. So I think like it just kind of goes to show the experience, too, of like mm -hmm. having lived through this so many times. 
it it definitely triggers that that uh, ad- adrenaline, but it doesn't it doesn't even if there is fear, it doesn't cause the same amount of like stress that it used to before. Um, and so you can see like it's it's off you now, it's pulled off you. Um, yeah, and I think at this point, right, Elaine finally like makes it to the truck, <laughs> just hauling ass, uh, and you can see everybody's here. Um, Sabrina's in the truck still, uh, mm-hmm. and we'll come back to Aki in that in a, in a bit. But yeah, you guys can. It's talk. yeah. It's a uh, it's a just a moment looking down at Mina, being like, "You good? Can we go back to that closed store? I think I need a new shirt." <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, hopefully, uh, there's no one else. And I roll down the window and pop my head out in perfect timing. Did we kill it? It's dead, yeah. Again. Yeah, that seemed... I was totally here the whole time. That seemed harder than usual, didn't it? Yeah, I've never seen them take that many hits before. Also, what's up with its arm? Yeah, and now that you're closer mm-hmm. and you're at it you can see like i said it looks like it looks like a, there the hand seems to be missing a lot of like the actually meat around the bone seems to just be gone um mm-hmm. and what it appears to be is is if like you took like an angle right of the bone and just like sawed it off um and it has created these really sharp um sort of uh like spear ends essentially um that appear to be uh left there in its stead. I think Glenn will help Nina up if she's not already standing and then just like give her a quick hug. <laughs> babe, babe, you're gonna get blood all over you. I truly <laughs> don't care. You are right. Yeah, I'm fine. I don't like guns. You're a okay shot though, so it's okay. Yeah, and I think as you say that, you can look back and you can see the gunshot that has gone through the back of the truck, <laughs> clearly from your from your rifle. I don't say anything. <laughs> I don't say anything because they're having a moment. I can read a room. I don't say anything, but I just need you to know the Virgo in me, in the back of my mind. No, not even the Virgo in me in my face is judging. <laughs> it's like it's like you're an okay shot. <laughs> you have a very loud <laughs> face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's like, I don't think, it's like, I'm good at concealing my emotions. I don't think anybody can actually really read me in my face. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna good insult my girlfriend, but also I have to be honest. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of shots to hit it. She did hit it though, and that counts. She's an okay shot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was moving, you know? Yeah, um, it was a moving target. They're hard to hit. Yeah. It wasn't even moving towards you. It was. <laughs> it was moving in one babe. direction. <laughs> Sabrina ducked in the truck, Elaine doing zigzags to not get hit in the background. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. What they couldn't see, what we could see, and then we're just. Okay. <laughs> the sight was off on the rifle, obviously. <laughs> Clearly. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, do you, it seems to be that everything has sort of died down. Um, you know, as you guys are looking around, I, I think, like, you're right in the middle of this um, of this parking lot. You're looking around. You don't see any, any other corrupted anywhere. Uh, nothing seems to be, like, you don't hear anything moving from the gunshots. So um, you're kind of back to uh, sort of just being, like, in, you know, you can just walk around and, and kind of do what you need to do. But I'm, yeah, I'm curious, like, wh- where do you go from here? Do you, you have this corrupted that you found in the other room um, that still left some stuff behind, and then you have this new one that seems to be odd. Um, yeah, I I will also, like, before I really get into anything, I'm going to say there was also another one in the store, but we, were, we put it down. That one went down quickly. This one... And like as I'm doing this, I'm sort of like leaning down and like looking at this. Does this look self-inflicted? Does this look like something that it was done to it? Mm. Like it uh, was this done with tools? Or did this guy like meet the wrong end of the sword? 
Yeah. Um, let's do intellect and surgery. You have surgery, right? Oh, uh, yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, intellect and surgery. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't, I would make it, but it would just be worse because it would be a price. <laughs> oh, I'm, roll I'm rolling with a, a plus 10 with this. Yeah. This is what I'm good at. This the is best heavy. at. Yeah. How's a, how's a 29 sound? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, yeah. So I think, I mean, you've seen this before, right? Mm -hmm. You, as a vet, like you had to do amputations, I'm sure, um, mm -hmm. like as part of your surgery. And so you, you clearly recognize like when a bone saw was used. Um, and so for whatever reason, somebody um, turned this thing into... Uh, at least in terms of the arm itself, seems to have uh, affected the, um, like, manually went in and made its arm a weapon uh, more than it already was with just his fist. Um, um, mm -hmm. Oh, no, go ahead. And then I will point out all of these revelations in being like, this is, this would be an incredibly painful procedure if someone was still alive, so this must have happened after. I don't think we've ever seen enough intelligence from a one of them to do it themselves. Is somebody doing this to the corrupted? All the more reason to get the fuck out of here. Oh my god! <laughs> I, 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 okay, let's say they're not, like, evolving... Like... Okay, let's say they're not doing that. That means there's some weirdo out here, like, basically sticking chainsaws and, and whatnot onto, onto motherfuckers. I'm not about that. Um, and, um... That was so hard to take down. Why? Get in the car. <laughs> get in the get car. Any, did we get any supplies? No, no, we didn't. We should check still if if someone is turning corrupted into guard dogs. There might be something worth having here. On the body in the store, it looked like he had some papers and stuff on him. Not our problem. Get in the car. I think Elaine is going to cut off the that spear arm, like at the elbow joint, so it's dull. Okay. Um, and just chuck it in one direction, and then drag the body in a different direction, so there is like space between body and truck, so and the body is less them. dangerous, just in case, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then say five minutes grab what you can, get out, keep the truck running, pull it up by the store, and then we leave. Yeah? Okay. We've wasted too much here to not to walk away empty-handed. There are motherfuckers gluing weapons onto the corrupted, and you still want to pick ass here? He had a friend! It's not worth it! Are y'all military trained? I don't think so. Unless we, there's somewhere else that we think we can get supplies from. In the middle of nowhere. We just yeah. drive in a straight line. We'll reach somewhere. I, I would say, too, you know that, like, uh, continuing west, you would end up in Lexington, Kentucky. How, do we have an idea of, like, how long it would take us to get there? Uh, to Just to Lexington would be pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It would be, especially, like, on a clear road. You, mm, Well, I mean, it won't take us that long to get to Lexington. And there's hopefully... There's more stuff there, so there's more things that we can hopefully replenish our supplies with. So I'm... I uh, worried about there being more. There hasn't... Nothing shown yet, but... Uh, this unnerves me. We made enough noise that if anything else is here, it would have come out. And sure, there are supplies in Lexington, but what are we going to trade or pay for them? Just five minutes. 
I don't think we have enough food to get to Lexington anyway. Not for all of us. Five mm. minutes. I'm keeping mm. track. You're not in the car by then. I'm going to book it. I'd okay. Keep the radio with you. The walkie, not the radio. Keep the radio down. Keep the walkie on. <laughs> Three of us, let's go. Five minutes. Grab what you can and get out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So is Mina going back to get a clean shirt? And yeah, I, I was also yeah. I was yeah. also going to see if there's any clothing scraps or anything, maybe, because um, most places should have a first aid kit if there's anything left in any of those kits, mm-hmm. um, or if any places has like rubbing alcohol or any kind of thing to be used as a uh, something to sanitize. And um, there was a gun next to the body, right? That too. Mm-hmm. And he had papers. Well, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, yeah, it could seem like, especially five years in, it seems weird for anybody to carry a paper around. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you go back in, you can, you, you know, grab whatever um, shirt you want and, and things like that. Like, it's uh, it's all t-shirts, so you just make something up, whatever sounds fun to you. Um, and uh, when you get to the, the guy that was there in the vest, you see the paper you see he's got like I said there's a handgun on the ground next to his hands Um, when you pull the paper out you can see that it's like a it seems to be like written on a corporate letterhead Uh, it says like Baron Corporation Um, and it basically says like if it says capture live corrupted and then it says be paid in shelter and resources and then that's it and then there's like there's an address on the letterhead um and it seems the address for it is uh it's basically like it still shows up as a um what's the word uh it still shows up as a paris address but it seems um but it's got like the what's the word uh as if it's got the highway listing so it's like somewhere off the highway um so yeah Uh, and that's that's what it says on the paper so you know presumably i think you're, you're all smart enough that you can see like this guy is either like recruiting for this or hunting for whomever this baron corporation is uh to bring in corrupted and this is a job gone wrong but Money and resources promised. Uh, and once I read this, um, if Mina's still in the clothing store, I will pass it over so she can take a look at it as I just uh, through the office, see if there's anything in the office and the back rooms real quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you look around in the in the room, you do see that there is a... Um, one last first aid kit um, that seems to be intact. It's like still, it's like those like kind of mm-hmm. cheap ones that they kind of have, like this still has a, the uh, plastic wrap around it and everything. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I will I'll shove that in my bag. Yeah. Uh, but I think otherwise that everything in this in these buildings is pretty pretty cleaned out. Um, it's you know, five years in, there's not a lot of stuff that people haven't dug through at this point or didn't raid in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's not there's not much else here, even if, like, you know, checking within the five minutes that you have before Sabrina runs away. Um, that's, that's kind of what you can see. There's no, um, like, backroom vending machine or anything that might have, like, any scraps of food. Uh, hmm. what I'll do is I'll let you do a luck roll to see if you can find something. So, eleven to twenty. Eighteen on the die. Okay, yeah. So you you go and you find a vending machine, and it's mostly cleared out. But there's one last bag of sun chips, um, cheddar sun chips that are kind of smashed in there. It's already been busted out and like mostly pulled through, but the, somebody just didn't bother to get that last bag. I give it to Mina. Okay. <laughs> Hope you like sun chips. You babe. Don't starve. 
<laughs> Eat some sun chips. They're nutritional. <laughs> Look, they're cheddar. They have cheese in them. <laughs> At least it's not potato chips, right? <laughs> These are made with wheat or something. <laughs> yeah. It, in the other franchise, that would be a bad idea. Um, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. So, yes, you guys set, have collected all the things that you could find in that in that quick time frame. Um, and you have this letter, or this note, I should say. And then, you know, grabbing everything I can, heading back out uh, whenever Mina, just make sure, you know, we don't split up. I'm not going to leave Mina behind, you know, whenever Mina's ready to leave and head back out to the car. Yeah, I think Mina has changed uh, shirt, is still wearing the motorcycle jacket, which does have a little zombie blood on it. I think that she sort of <laughs> wiped it off as best as she could, but um, has read the letter and pocketed it. But as we walk back to the car, asks, I mean, money and resources. It's tempting, but I mean, touching one of those alive you know I do the quote that it's not an easy task if we had known we, we could have fun in the office Ugh. yeah I mean yeah um, <laughs> we did then the the now time do you do you show the letter to the other two yeah I'll definitely show it to Elaine Mm. And I'll mention that we, uh, uh, what we found on uh, the the person, you know, like he had a he had a, a memo from Bering Corporation. It appears that uh, they're paying people for live corrupted being delivered to them, food, resources, shelter. Mm. -mm. Uh uh, is that how those fuckers died in there? Yeah, it does appear that the person in there did die doing this. Mm, wow. Wow. No. It's also just one person. It didn't appear to have any particular gear that one would need to do that. Did you Why not see the bear it traps? Was... Where is the chain? Did you, you not need at least two bear traps? You not see their like fucking friend over there? I mean, you you clearly saw it because you dragged it all the way over there. Do we know that that wasn't here already? Do we not know? Doesn't matter. We don't know. Group of four. That's an even better way to get fucked when one of us turns. I mean, it's I mean, nothing you go into carelessly. Mm. Your girlfriend almost got mauled because she tackled one of them off of the roof of the car that has a window shield on the front of it. I could have just floored it, and it would have rolled off once I hit the brakes. But instead, your girlfriend tackled it off the hood and yeah. then didn't pin it. I tackled it off, and I was fine. So maybe we're, you were more lucky. prepared for this. You are than lucky. the person who died doing it. We're not doing this. I hope you're not even considering this. You guys aren't like superheroes. I hope you realize that. You're like a camp counselor. And the person that goes and finds the camp counselor when they get lost in the woods. And this ain't the woods. We're also not doing great in terms of supplies yeah for the audience like how is everybody doing on food and water assuming that you will now have to like eat lunch right mm -hmm. uh, how much food is it required for one day of survival uh, uh, I believe it's three uh, I got enough food yeah. for today Same. Yeah, and I have Same. A, a, uh, two water which I don't know if is enough for today or not yeah you'll need to find some water too did those sun chips count as a food yeah okay yes. cool so I got three <laughs> oh, that's what I was I hoping for two before. I remembered you said you only had two I'm like oh no <laughs> my girl yeah it counts 
Um, yeah. So, things. Uh, how is Sabrina doing on supplies? Um, I've got enough for today, uh, but if I ration it, it'll be two days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds rough. Um, how are we looking on um, ammo after that? Also, You're I have as- zero ammo. <laughs> ammo. Yeah. You're out of uh, bullets for the rifle. I have one clip for the shotgun. What are crossbows looking at? Did you were you able to retrieve any of them? Uh, was I able to retrieve? Uh, yeah, give me a luck roll. Okay. See if it, see if you could pull it out safely from its chest after no, getting hit by a car. No, I got a two on the sense. die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you got, got hit, by, hit a by a car. car. It's yeah. fine. I, I had ten arrows, so I'm only yeah. down to like nine. Oh, roll it again for the oh, yeah. for the guy in the other. That one's much better. That's a nineteen on the die. Okay. Yeah. So you got one back. So yeah. yeah. So, so you, I, so you I just have got nine. nine. Yeah. So we'll be out of food. And I have a, a handgun with one clip. Low mm-hmm. on water. We have low on ammo. Why is there something that we need? Shelter is something we need. Mm-hmm. We have how much fuel we can maybe get to Lexington? Maybe. Oh, we don't really. I don't know where we're headed in Lexington. Does this memo have an address? It does. Place, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would say you guys have like a map that you could reference. And I think when you do that referencing, you can see that like this area mm. is full of like farms and horse ranches. It's like mm. Kentucky is huge for horses. Um, and most of those farms back in the day would have been tobacco, uh, but they're now possibly been repurposed if somebody is using that land to do it. Um, the Baron Corporation that you see, like this is, Again, this is five years in. This paper is not like this paper looks like it's been in an office somewhere um, and then now used to, you know, get a Sharpie and write this note out. Um, so, like, it seems like there's a a good chance that there that the Baron Corporation itself is still operating in some capacity. And when you reference the address to your map, you can see that it's less than halfway to Lexington. But it is on the road to Lexington. And it'll just be like off the highway, which would be essentially like a 15 minute drive. It's 15 minutes away. It uh, might be worth at least going there and seeing. Is it legit? What's going on? Is yeah. this offer even still mm-hmm. valid or are they all dead by now? Because, I mean, if there are people there, maybe we could trade something. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they don't need much, you know? Like, maybe they don't... Maybe we can remove all the limbs and bring back a head and a torso that's still kicking. Capture is such a broad term. Alive, also very broad term when we're talking about corrupted. Does it... And the paper doesn't mention anything that they wanted for it, just says we want one. Okay. Yeah, bring it alive. Yeah. You bring it alive. And, and, uh, you know, you see Siobhan, and Siobhan is thinking and just being like, well, if one wanted to study a corrupted, figure out if, if they're... If this is a corporation and they're trying to do any kind of study on the corrupted, you would definitely need a alive subject. Is this the only way you could test any possible vaccines, antivirus, cures? Have are, any of us heard? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I think I was about to ask the same question. Is are we familiar them? with the Baron, Baron Company? Corporation? Yeah. Um, hmm. I would say there's a fair chance that you are. It's it, basically in this world, the Baron Corporation is like this huge conglomerate, and they did like, um, they had like a bunch of different uh, corporate holdings for agriculture around the world, um, and that's like how they like maintained 
basically all their money, but they were just like, like imagine if like Amazon owned a bunch of farms, like it's that level of, of just like stupid rich and, um, and just like corporate life, uh, which, you know, tends to not mix, but somehow they managed to like work their way into um, a lot of different people, either by buying them out of their family farms or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, depending on your character's opinions on uh, capitalism specifically, they probably would be like, yeah, fuck Baron Corporation because they, you know, X, Y, and Z um, and how they're not good for like people who have lived in these like family farms for ages right uh but yeah they have a lot of money from farms all over the world that they um use to basically just like make their living off of the agricultural market so had i should say past tense so yeah um what's what's the decision or has has the group reached and I mean at this point like Sabrina's already stated she doesn't want to do this and then now has listened to this whole conversation about all of the quote unquote pros of doing this so uh, yeah I still think the cons outweigh the pros and I'm not I don't want to do it it's gonna be hard to just sit around in your little tower when we're out of food water and gas you're acting like I don't do anything, when in reality, you did the stupidest thing here by tackling one of these after, you know, shooting and missing. You almost shot me dead. I don't have to worry about corrupted when I'm with you. Oh, great. Next time, I'll just let it get you then. Don't need to You're warn you. are pretty good at it this time. Even better at it getting you. We don't have the, you, the supplies to even attempt to get one. Unless you are super willing to just tackle another one, get bit, and then we can just tie you up. It could be something, it could be nothing. I, I My only worry is we get to Lexington and we can't find space. We can't find a good place to lay, find a good place to, you know, claim and that have to deal with people. I don't, we don't know what awaits us in Lexington. I, I just want to go there and figure out, is this legit? That's all I want to do. Look, if they're paying people in supplies and shelter for catching a corrupted, then maybe they'll be willing to help pay to actually do the catching. Clearly they're desperate if they hire that guy. It might be worth bringing, I don't like the idea, but it might be worth bringing the corpse of our pointy friend over there. It's not alive, but it's different. And they might pay for that, if nothing else. You probably want to retrieve the arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The arm's moved since you've no! been... No! I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I didn't turn away! I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, you can collect it. Uh, Siobhan's vote is let's, you know, if, if anything, maybe we can trade for some supplies there, cure them out, figure out what they need this for. You know, is this legit? Is this, you know, you know, a trap or anything like that? Let's be a safe place to stay overnight. Yeah, maybe they can at least give us a place to stay overnight and we can make the decision in the morning. Especially if we don't go on empty handed. Though the corrupted will be a little empty handed. <laughs> but I'm sh- um, cool. So Sabrina's driving, right? Yeah, and I'm cussing y'all out in Mandarin real hard. Uh, it okay. is like a pickup truck, right? Like, yes, it is. Okay, yeah. good. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not riding with that thing in the cab. <laughs> no way. No, no, no. No freaking no, way. Yeah. It's in it's in the back with like whatever supplies y'all don't carry. Mm. Um probably get a, if we find a tarp somewhere we can wrap that thing up in just in case. So it's mm. not bleeding on our supplies. Mm. Give me a luck roll and see if we can find a tarp. 
12? Yep, that'll work. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you find a tarp in. in I don't know. Maybe war, someone used the, a tarp over yeah. like one of the, the, the one of the windows that had broken out because they were trying to make this place their home base. Yeah. They got a leaky ceilings. Yeah. Your default yeah. is obviously tarps. <laughs> and then we can um, clean it and use it later. This is great. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So um, you've got this thing bundled and tarped in the back, uh, and you start to drive that direction. Um, like I said, it's only about fifteen minutes, and you can see off the side of the road where like the trees start to open up. You can see this large sort of concrete um, building with these walls that um, built in front of it, uh, and uh, the the walls are like they're wood, but they're like large slats of wood. Um, and you can see as you're like pulling around into the drive, you can see that there's actually guards up on the towers uh, at the front of this wall. Um, they appear to be like dressed in uh, like basically like black gear. They have um, assault rifles in their hands uh, and there is a gate that is currently open um and as you are just sort of pulling up slowly you can see that there are two guards um also down on the bottom that are watching you approach uh they kind of raise their hand to have you stop the vehicle quick diver diversion here mm -hmm. before we left the the mexican restaurant the back door it was still propped open correct yeah, it doesn't have a closure, so it's not going to close itself. Right. I just had to check because there was a cat in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to get stuck in there. That's lovely. Yes, we will not We will not harm this cat. Um, no, I definitely can get out. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So we pull up. So, so as you pull up, you can see um, these guards, like they tell you to stop and exit the vehicle. Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah. Mina will pull out the letter from them uh, and hold it in her hands also. Hands up. Okay. Yeah. How's uh, uh, Elaine and Sabrina? You guys getting out as well? Nope. My hands are up in the car. <sighs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So you see the two guards that are on on the ground that are watching you uh they're kind of just like they look happy uh and they look um cheerful and they're like they clearly like finishing like this story that they were telling between each other uh one of them is a guy he's about like five seven um dark hair he has brown like dark straight hair he has brown skin uh and he he's kind of like eyeing you to the side and as he's looking to um his the other guard you see that it's this tall woman she's like six two uh she seems like really fit uh she's got her hair like shaved on the sides and pulled back into a ponytail and um she's got this like light tan skin and hazel eyes and she's eating a roll like a roll of bread um she's watching you uh and she finishes saying something the guy laughs um and she starts to walk over and she sees the paper in your hand. Uh, so she walks over to Mina and looks down at you. And she says, what have you got there? Uh, seems like an invitation to me, capturing a live corrupted. And she holds her hand out and opens it. Reads it for a second, looks back. And she looks at you, she's like, well... Yeah, at least to get recruited. Did you capture one already? Not live, but the one we found was different. We thought it might still be something you were interested in. Uh, well, that's not really up to me, but uh, we can take a look. And she's like, let me kind of break it down. We'll let you in. I'm going to be a courtesy day. Uh, you can see whether or not this is real. I know that's a lot of people's concerns. We'll feed you and let you have a bed for the night and then uh, break down how exactly it's expected of you to work for us. So we'll lay out those options, but for now 
uh, you can move on in and and we'll see uh, we'll get you set up and you can see like um, let's have because uh, Sabrina's still in the car Aki give me a hmm, give me an empathy alertness roll please I was going to ask if I could do something like this, because that's the main reason why I stayed in the car. <laughs> yeah. they, they pull a gun on us and we're just going to floor it on them. Like, it's like, <laughs> like, like you know, like it's one of those things. No. Um, that's going to be over 20. Okay. Um, yeah, because they're really yeah. 18 on the day. Perfect. So it's, yeah, the, the guards all seem chill. Uh, they're not like, they're not reaching for weapons. They're not like acting suspicious or anything like that. The one thing that you do notice as you're kind of waiting, you see a person walking by. Um, a like it seems she appears to be like a young blonde woman walking by in a lab coat uh, past the front gate that's open, um, and she is looking around. And I'll say like because you rolled so high, like you can see like her eyes look a little. Um, sunk in like she's like tired uh she and she's looking around a lot like in a very skittish manner um and then she walks past and you can't see her anymore uh but yeah otherwise the guards all seem fine everything like it's the area seems clear and safe um and so um the guard she's like you can you can keep your weapons just you know don't carry them out and about uh while you're here um unless you're with a guard so we can just make sure it's just for our safety um but uh yeah you're free to go inside go go through the gate take a left um and you'll see a a desk with another guard and there is where they have like the signups um and as um yeah and she starts to walk towards the back of the truck Yeah, I'll um, go with her to yes, same. Um, take a body. Okay, yeah, and so she she doesn't like seem to like she's not going to the tailgate. She just like looks over, uh, and she pulls back the tarp like where she seems like the head is, and she says she looks at it, and she's like, it's just like a dead, uh, corrupted, and she's like she's kind of like nods and um, nods to the to the other guard by the gate. It's the arm you'll want to look at. We detached it, but the rest of it was like that when we found it. And she gives you a curious look, uh, and then she pulls, like, un- unwraps it, and she pulls it out, and she looks at it closely. And mm, she doesn't seem... I'll say, if you want to see if, like, she gives anything away on her face, you'll have to roll for it, but, you know, yeah. Without that, it just seems like she's like, okay, like, you're just accepting very... Uh, what would that if, roll be? What would that roll yeah. be? If you want to roll, then I'm going to do empathy and psychology. I'll just point out, like, the fact that, that uh, it looks like, you know, surgical saw. I'll just medical jargon kind of thing. Yeah. Can I look for a rear view mirror and do it? <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. I'm saying this because neither of those roles are great for me. So, <laughs> well, hang. But well, we need to know what they are because you're going to be collecting stress if they're not great. So, oh, I didn't. I didn't oh, roll. Okay. I you didn't roll. I was. I, I elected to not roll. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Because it wasn't great. Yeah. Sixteen. Also sixteen. Okay. And Ferris, what was yours? Two. Uh, two. I'm so sorry. No, it's nineteen because you have to add your modifier, not just say what's on the dice. <laughs> yes. Uh, Aki nerking herself again. (laughs) Okay. It's late, man. (laughs) No, this is a survival situation. Don't do it. Yeah. Um, Okay. So you rolled a two. So that's going to be two stress uh, for. Do some stress um, finally. Yeah, for sure. You all are do some stress. Um, I'm going to start busting out the esoteric rolls. Um, But uh, no, I'm just kidding. So, yeah, so for the other two, you can see, you just see that there is, it it at least seems like there's some form of recognition, that she looks at it, 
and she goes, okay, I've seen this before, or I know where this came from, etc. Something like that. Uh, but it's such a very like quick thing. Um, and then she listens to you patiently as you explain like that you think it came from a saw and doesn't really give anything else away and then just kind of covers it back up and uh, and says you're you're free to go through. So we uh, get back in the car. I roll up the windows, move a little bit, and then go, uh, they had a weird looking doctor, lab coat and everything. My money's on that they're making these motherfuckers. Yeah, what else? Uh... What else? Whatever feelings should we get? This, I don't know. I think it's worth going in, even if we don't take the job. It's free food, free shelter. Yeah, and I think like as you pull in, you can. One of the other things that you notice, where the rest of the world seems to be, like we mentioned before, like overrun and and the streets sort of in disrepair. Everything here seems to be taken care of like you know somebody's doing landscaping somebody's cleaning stuff up it doesn't seem like the paint is like you know people are like repainting things so um for for all of the reticence that it causes it seems like there at least is some order in this building and, and I, I had think good roles. <laughs> <laughs> any role looks good, right? Um, and I think, yeah, as you as you pull in and pull around and you approach where you would park the truck and and get out to talk to like the recruiter, um, I think that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. Eee! You all roll so fucking well. <laughs> This you is not- only made I think I had a plus five in most of the things you asked me to roll. Nope. <laughs> the combat, yeah. I mean, obviously you guys are built for combat, so um yeah. Uh, this but is that's- normal from Aki, but this is abnormal yes. for like yeah. the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, the dice just uh, like this game because it's just awesome. Twenty nine, thank you. Um yeah. So that's it for tonight. So we will we will return to finish the, the rest of the story. Um but um yeah i'm really bad at ending stuff so uh mm-hmm. somebody please help me out yeah uh <laughs> well um if you enjoy what you hear here uh navarre where can they find this game and check out other things that you do yeah so um follow me on social media at navar snp that's n-a-v-a-r s-n-p um i pretty much only use twitter but i guess if you're like on hive i will someday see that um and yeah if you want to get the game same thing so navar snp.h.io slash the hyphen corrupted uh is where you can find it um it, by the time this comes out, hopefully the print run will be done. But that said, uh, hopefully there will be cause for another one to be done as well, because that would be really awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, check it out. Play the game, buy the game. Um, I'm, I, I'm, This is a lot of fun. I really appreciate y'all bringing me yeah. on to do this for you. And, um, yeah, I'm glad that you guys are having fun. It has been a blast. Uh, and... You know, Tick isn't here, so I will uh, do the outro as usual uh, this time. Uh, and if you enjoy what we do here, uh, check us out on all social media at Goblets and Gaze. Uh, we have a Patreon. You can help us out, help pay the cast, afford new, um, you know, technology and uh, all of that fun stuff. We have a Discord. Come hang out there. Talk about the episodes. And yeah, uh, I guess now is the point where we all say the line. Don't forget to double tap. <laughs> that. <laughs> Eat your vegetables, they are yeah. a rare commodity. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Aubrey here with a fun little announcement. Uh, Goblets and Gaze is now an affiliate over at Adventure Dice. And we know how much we all love those math rocks. So if you need some new math rocks in your life, go over to adventuredice.ca and in the checkout code, enter 
our promo code GOBLETS for 10% off. But also, they have dice. They have other TTRPG accessories and tabletop goodies, dice trays, uh, condition rings, and things like that, little spell casting stuff. Great stuff there. Go check them out uh, and support our show. Thank you. Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.